Hello, and welcome back to the Graceful Tangled YouTube channel. I'm Emmy Kate, a young but passionate NATO and crocheter. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're looking for me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, Etsy, and Pinterest as The Graceful Tangle. On Ravelry and Etsy, you can find my knit and crochet patterns. I'll be sure to link all of this below, and I truly hope you go and check me out over there. So if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe so that you get a notification every time I publish a new video. So today I want to talk about something a little bit different. I recently put a question um, box on Instagram with the hopes of doing a Q&A video in the future. Um, so I guess in regards to that, if you have any com questions for me, you can leave them in the comments down below. Um, but anyway, one of the comments that I got from that was, what is your design process? So that's kind of a big question. And instead of putting that into the pool of questions for that full video, I decided to make a video just on that question. I believe everybody, every knit and crochet designer has their own little process, whether it's simple and straight to the point or more drawn out and very thought through. Um, but basically my process has three steps. It is conceptualize, materialize, and finalize. So I'm going to go down each point and kind of explain a little bit and the work that goes into each one. Um, and kind of give you a little bit of inspiration if you are an ankle shade designer yourself or if you just follow other people's patterns. Sometimes it's, um, kind of exciting to know somebody else's process so that you can better understand the amount of work that has gone into just that little pattern. So the first step is conceptualize, and that is just what it sounds like. I come up with a concept, whether it's something that I was inspired by, something that I um, want to have, something that I don't have, something that was I saw in a store and I liked it and thought I could make it myself instead of purchasing it, um, anything along those lines. So, for example, um, my Summer Lines Can Cozy, which as I'm recording this video is my most recent um, design. So that Can Cozy, I drink sparkling water often and it's cold, we keep it in the refrigerator, and so when I take it out it has, and when I when I start drinking it and it becomes close to the room temperature, it develops a layer of condensation, not conversation, condensation on the outside. And while that doesn't really matter, that's exactly what can are for. And so instead of purchasing one, purchasing one of the little spongy ones that you can get a design on or a company's logo, I decided to crochet one because that's how I will. <laughs> So with that, it really was something that I needed, something that I would like to have. And so I decided to kind of come up with my own pattern instead of following somebody else's or purchasing something. Um, so again, um, with that pattern, that was the concept, something that I wanted to hold around my can to keep my drink from getting my hand cold or falling under my hands because it's slippery or whatever the case may be. So then I move on to the materialize um, part of my design process. So that is me making the item, me thinking in my head, okay, how, how could I form this shape? What's the best way for me to do this? And so for a can cozy, there's multiple, multiple ways that you can make one. You can start at the bottom like I did and work your way out um, from the middle increasing and then work up to form the body of the can or you could crochet a strip of fabric, a rectangle, and then use buttons on either side to kind of hold it around the cozy and hold just that part, just that, just that strip of fabric. Um, there's multiple ways you could do it. So I decided that I wanted to go the more, I guess, thorough route maybe, um, and work from the bottom up. So I did some math. I measured the circumference of a can, a classic can, um, made a gauge swatch and decided how many stitches I needed to achieve that circumference. I chose what yarn I wanted to use. I decided on a hook that I would like to make work, um, based on the density of the fabric that I wanted. I chose a stitch pattern that was, um, 
both sturdy and durable for long-term use, but also easy to do so that people would enjoy making it. That's a big thing. Um, you want people to enjoy making your pattern. So the more you could, the more people you can satisfy, the better. So yeah, I just made it. Um, I made it how I wanted. I made it what I thought would be best. And then, um, I move on to the finalized process. So the materialized process kind of takes a while. It could take more than one cozy for me. It did take more than one cozy and more than one try for me to get the pattern how I want it or... Um, get the look that I wanted to achieve, get the fit that I wanted to achieve. Um, when I actually originally started that pattern, I had a completely different stitch pattern than I wanted to use. I had a completely different yarn that I wanted to use and a different crochet hook. Everything was different. And then when I started crocheting, I realized that it wasn't going to work. It was, I wasn't going to get the look that I wanted. It wasn't going to have good shape. It wasn't going to fit the can very well. And even though all of those things were great, the stitch pattern, the yarn, the crochet hook I was using, all of them were amazing tools. It wasn't great for that one project, for that one design. Um, so I moved on to my next, my next, um, I guess, trial run. And I chose a different yarn, a different crochet hook, and I went on a different pattern route. Um, and it worked much better that time. And so after a few tries of that, you kind of get in a group and you realize, okay, this is what worked on this one. This is what worked on this one. This is what didn't work on this try. This is what did work. And then you kind of make those changes um, and decide what's what's best for that pattern. And then the finalize process, that is writing the pattern. And so if you realize each of these steps takes a while, um, the conceptualized part is the easiest for me because it's easy for me to think of ideas. It's easy for me to go, ooh, I want that, or ooh, I think this would be so cool to have. Um, it's easy for me to have a picture of what I want. It's a lot harder for me to make that picture in my mind come to life. And so the material, the materialized process is making that picture um and then the finalized process is kind of editing the picture per se um so you have that finished object well now you have to take that and you have to write a pattern and you have to write the pattern that other people can understand and other people can read um and so it, pattern writing is i believe different for everybody um i think some people like to do it in increments like maybe even stretch it out over multiple days some people like to hunker down for hours and get it all done um some people like to even like take notes while they're making their project and then be detailed with those notes and then simply put those notes onto a google doc or wordpress whatever you use um so my my method typically um, I usually fail at taking notes while I'm crocheting. I change so often that I will crochet an entire row, write down what I did, and then rip it out because it didn't work. Um, so that I usually don't do that work. As much as I kind of want to, I don't. What I typically end up doing, um, and what I've kind of come to accept over, you know, these past five months of writing patterns, is I read my crochet. So for the can cozy, I hold the can cozy in my hand and I look at it and I go from where I started and I count how many stitches I started with and I count how many stitches I increased on the next row and so on and so forth and I work all the way up until the pattern is written. Um, and then I will go through and I will edit the pattern and I'll make sure that everything's easy to read, easy to follow. Um, I don't even make another one, make another one of the same item. So for the can cozy, I made two. Um, and the second one is me following the pattern as if I had never made one before. So I'm working row by row, checking each row off, making sure each stitch count is exactly what it's supposed to be, and there's no typos, um, etc. And then you put the finishing touches to the pattern. You add a, um, pretty photo picture, the titles, everything that makes that pattern come together based on what your company represents. Um, I have particular fonts that I like to use. I have a particular... Um, aesthetic that I kind of like to bring in my photos. I have a sa the same um, like bio page at the end of all my patterns. I have a certain layout that I like to keep. So that's what's, that, that's what's in that finalized process is doing all of those little nitty gritty details, um, pun intended, <laughs> all those nitty gritty details to get the pattern how you want it. And then you release it. You let it go and you um, kind of I like to post about it on social media and make videos here on YouTube to kind of get that pattern out there. And it's up to other people um, 
what if they make it or not, what changes you could make. Um, they give people give feedback, which is so so appreciated. If you have ever given me feedback, feedback, um, I have always acted on that feedback and tried to change in the future and make those changes that make my patterns better. Um, so I'm I'm very much still new to pattern designing. I learn something new every time I write a pattern. Um, but I have grown so much over the past five years. And I'm so excited to continue this journey of being a knit and crochet pattern designer. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and kind of learning about my design process. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any questions for a future Q&A video, leave those below. Um, any and all questions are welcome and I will do my best to answer them. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more, and I will see you next time. Bye.